So the first track there, Headhunter. Uh, Clive's with me now. Now, tell us a little bit about this project. Well, Sea Beam is actually uh, Chris Mills, and uh, Chris is a, a singer-songwriter from the uh, Leicestershire area. And uh, we teamed up together on the, the trusty SoundCloud, as you might recall, yeah. um, where I've met up with a, a number of uh, other musicians over the years. Um, his name, incidentally, comes from his uh, fascination with sci-fi. And um, it's it's the Sea Beam. It's, it's, it's from the original Blade Runner movie. All right, Sea Beam. To Roy Batty, who references Sea Beam during his uh, his uh, closing sequence. So that that's where that comes from. And uh, the Phantom Man is um, yeah. is appointed to my uh, my uh, Roland keyboard at the workstation, which is a Phantom G8. So Sea Beam and the Phantom Man. I mean, a lot of um, what you've done um, recently has been instrumental. Why did you decide to, to sort of work with a vocalist? It has. So um, quite a bit of the feedback I've had is, oh, that'd be lovely if there was a vocal on this particular track. And what I've come to realise, actually, John, since perhaps last we spoke two or three years ago, um, is that I've become more comfortable being genre fluid. I've got a range of styles that appeal to me, uh, from electronic, eclectic, to synth pop to jazz, to jazz funk, neo-jazz. And I've had the privilege, really, of working with some great musicians who've helped me to develop, and they're comfortable with my perhaps slightly unique style of writing. So I don't I don't write in a sort of conformist fashion, you know, with a verse, a bridge, a chorus, a middle eight, and so forth. Some of the bits end up like that, but I just come to an end of a section, and then something inside me says, right, we need to go in this direction. And that direction might actually be putting a bit of jazz funk style music on the back of an electronic track. Um, and Chris has been fantastic in terms of responding to that. So this this particular project, Injection Electronic, was inspired by Chris in terms of seeing that on the back of a classic Citroen motor car at some sort of car festival, I think. Uh, and then we thought, right, how about a synth pop sort of 80s themed style? Uh, and I've generated the backing tracks. Chris has written the the lyrics and done a top job with the vocal line, lots of lovely harmonies. And uh, I've done the mixing and mastering. And here we are with six tracks on the injection electronic. So the opening track we played actually on the way into the interview, Headhunter, tell us about that. Yeah, this is quite interesting. It's a philosophical one. I think probably half of the tracks um, I've thrown to Chris uh, a suggested title. This one is actually uh, just a, a name that came to my mind, Headhunter, which can conjure up all sorts of things. And uh, Chris has taken on a bit of a philosophic approach to this. And uh, from his perspective, it portrays a distorted view of what happens to us as we leave this planet uh, and uh, it, it's, it's the case that just in his view, perhaps just a select few are chosen by the headhunter, um, no matter what your contribution to the world is and, and perhaps no matter whereabouts in the world you're from. So this is about who is selected for something special after life. That's the headhunter. Now we're going to go out actually of the interview with Reflect and uh, Forget, which I think is one of your favourites. But tell us yeah. generally about the, some of the other tracks. As you say, six yeah. tracks in total. Yeah, the six. They're all um, a position around the synth pop theme. They've all they've all developed for me, offering a backing track to to Chris. So without common structure, and he's done a first class job of picking his way around that and putting his own spin in terms of the strong melody line and great harmonies. Um, so we, we, we're really pleased with the with, with the results, and uh, I hope your listeners take a time to have a listen to Injection Electronic and enjoy the full six. And is this the kind of thing that you could ever do live, or, or would you not want to do that? I, I think um, that's, that's an interesting question. I know Chris would love to do something live. The way I write, an idea comes to me, and with the workstation, I, I leave any connection to IT to the very last minute, so I don't use... Um, you know, computer software to do my writing is all on a synthesizer workstation, like a giant keyboard, an electronic keyboard, if you like. Yeah. And if you imagine like an artist, when it, when an idea comes to you, you start sketching and you capture it in the there and then, particularly if you're out in the field or, um, you know, you're capturing nature as it happens. And I get a sense of inspiration. And, and to be honest, if I was to play one of my tracks, I would have to learn them from scratch. <laughs> which might sound a bit odd, but I'd have to learn them from scratch because the ideas come to me, they go into the keyboard uh, and they're captured and I mix it from there. So 
Perhaps oh, really? it, I, I only play a phrase once and it's captured, so I'd have to relearn it in order to play it live. So from the moment that you start and then from the moment that uh, oh, you know, Chris will add, add the, the vocals, yeah. what, how long does this whole process take? Uh, I, I guess this has probably taken us around sort of three months, but sometimes things, things come to both of us very, very quickly. So, um, you know, in, in, within a week, Chris can come back to me with a sketch of, of what, he, what he's come up with, a vocal line and an idea how to develop it. Um, and once we've both agreed on that, then he will send me um, all, all the uh, all the audio files, uh, and then I will place them around the, the backing track and do the full mix, and then uh, you use a use a process for for mastering, and, and off we go. And um, I mean, Chris is a phenomenal artist as well, so there's some of the artwork he's done for uh, each of these six tracks. I know he's approached uh, in a really meticulous way. Um, together with a really interesting album cover or two. So I, th- I think it's a great package and a great combination. I'm sorry to keep this fairly short, but the, the, the sound isn't the best we've ever had. L- no. Let's go out with Reflect and Forget. Tell me a little bit about that track. Well, for this particular track, is based on a nightmare, and it's when suddenly and very clearly you become concerned that the person you thought who loved you dearly actually does not. And perhaps they are actually hollow. This is Reflect and Forget. Thanks, Clive. Thanks, John. What if you